Yeah, restaurants in Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech on a given Monday morning. And we're talking about how restaurants are encouraging tourists to return with restaurants in Hawaii. And more specifically with Cheryl Matsuoka, who runs it. Uh, hi, Cheryl. Welcome to your own show. Okay. Aloha, Jay. And yes, restaurants are encouraging our tourists to return to Hawaii. I'd like to introduce my two guests, Jay. Okay. Alan Farinas, owner of Shorefire. Um, he has Shorefire Fresh Grill and Bar. He has two locations, both in Waikiki, both welcoming restaurants, uh, welcoming tourists to come back. He's been waiting for this day where tourism can open up. And I'd like to introduce Rebecca. Um, Rebecca, I'm going to say it, your last name, Tomactor. Tomactor. And she is the manager of Uncle Bo's and Yaya's Chop House and Seafood. Yaya's had just opened up when the pandemic hit. And so she's going to talk about a little bit about how they're welcoming and encouraging tourists to come into their locations. You know, Uncle Bo's is kind of a famous place. Okay, well, let me, let me give you my thoughts to start. And that is, uh, okay, we're, we're going to start tourism. Um, and uh, it'll be ups and downs. And uh, it'll, it'll, it'll swing hundreds or thousands uh, every time they change the paradigm. And they will, because we're not out of this yet. And, um, and, and, and the question is, um, you know, what happens when a tourist comes here? And, and, and in case we forgot, you know, a big part of tourism in Hawaii is food. It's, it's local food. It's exotic food. It's good food. It's interesting food. It's interesting ambiance and all that. Um, and um, the fact is that it's part of the reason, you know, people come to Hawaii. It's not only that they eat while they're here, it's they come here so they can eat. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay, so restaurants are critically important and will be more important. And there's really enough goodwill and enough, um, what do you want to call it, food magnetism uh, to keep you guys going. But you have to be innovative. You have to, you know, belly up to new ideas. You have to be thinking all the time and watching, you know, how the industry is doing, watching how the tourism industry is doing so you can satisfy not only their needs, but their, you know, their prospective needs, their aspirational needs. Okay, let's, let's talk to you first, Rebecca. Um, so what, what a moment, huh? You, you start your restaurant and bingo, this COVID. Um, you know, welcome to the industry that COVID is telling you, little virus things in your ears telling you welcome to the industry. So what did you do to adapt when, the, when all this happened? Right, um, man, what a whirlwind. Really, initially, we wanted to keep the momentum and energy, but stop the hemorrhaging of, you know, production, cease halt. Um, so we really kind of hunkered down and just tried to wait out the storm. And at the first opportunity, we, we jumped back in and just picked up where we left off. We're really hoping with tourism reigniting, not just to be able to welcome tourists back, um, but our local patrons. Hopefully now with tourists back in the economy, um, there's money flowing back to our locals and we can welcome them back through our doors. Um, so October 15 was definitely an important day for us. And for Yaya's, we are located in the heart of Kakako, just adjacent to Salt on Oahu's South Shore. Um, so tell us what, you know, what you've done that we would consider innovative and creative in, in the interim to you know, get off the regular path of restaurants in Hawaii and, and uh, become especially interesting to tourists. You know, that's a great question because typically our philosophy hasn't been much in your face marketing. It's been very organic, um, viral marketing, word of mouth, focusing on delicious food with a great ambience where people want to gather and enjoy themselves um, and let our, our business kind of speak for itself. So with not having the audience physically around too much, um, a lot has been relied on social media marketing um, and just reminding people that dining out is enjoyable. It's a good time. It's what you want to do. So as soon as we're able to allow that and we can welcome you back through our doors, come see us and you'll have a great time. So have you been successful in the interim? Um, what, what, how, many, how many seats are you filling? How many days are you operating? 
And what kinds of things are you doing to improve those numbers? So we are still at half capacity as mandated, um, but we are knock on wood, some wood around me. We've been able to, you know, fill our seats. The interest is there. Um, the uptick happened with tourism reopening on October 15th. Um, we are also trying to reward our locals and especially with the Hawaii restaurant card, we're offering a fantastic promotion during the weekdays with a 25% off of your food tab. Um, that's been exciting. Um, we also have really tried to gear towards a, a good food experience for takeout um, and things for guests to enjoy at home or at their hotel. Um, we've focused on our craft cocktails, craft cocktails to go, go take this, enjoy the beach or, or outside where it's allowed to drink, um, those types of things. Um, okay, um, so I guess my, my question is, uh, have, you, have you changed anything? Um, have you changed your menu? Have you changed the way, um, you know, you bring people in for, for, for takeout? Uh, have you changed um, your staff? Are they still with you? We have. Um, we never can become complacent in our industry. So we're evolving and adapting. Um, we have had to change our menu slightly for when we closed um, for um, inventory things. And we've tried to keep you know, the local sense of our menu um, to intrigue our tourist guests. And also locals love to eat good local food, great prime steaks. Um, we have had to change and evolve. Have you had any issues with uh, supply? Some, yes, um, things are improving now. Um, we did have issues with supply getting things to the island. There was a lot of fear, especially in March and April of what was going to be allowed to come in, how, what would the cost be? Um, so it, we're really taking it kind of week by week with our vendors um, and trying to work with them. And um, supply has been an issue with things coming out of Japan. Our A5 Wagyu from Japan um, was a concern at a point to bring that in, which is an important component to our menu. Um, we're just keeping an eye on things and trying to keep up. Are you able to pay the bills or, or have you needed help? Have, did you get any CARES money? Did you get any money from the city and county? We're doing our best to, you know, reach out and apply for all things that are applicable to us. Um, we have had to restructure some things internally, of course, to again, stop the hemorrhaging and stay afloat. Um, it has not been smooth sailing, <laughs> but we're doing our best um, working with our landlords and, you know, our vendors and just continuing to build relationships for an understanding of we got to get through this together. So we're doing what we can. Okay. okay. Um, let's let's go to Alan for a minute. Um, Alan, uh, can, you, can you compare your restaurant and your experience here in COVID uh, with the experience Rebecca has had? Uh, yes, yeah, so um, we are in Waikiki, of course. Uh, we closed, I believe, our Koa Ave location, which is behind the Hyatt. Uh, I think it was March 23rd or something like that, or one of those days. And then um, we kept the International Marketplace location open um, a few days after that until basically there were just no more tourists. Uh, and so we completely closed. And we, um, when we reopened, uh, we were reopened that first time in August, but then they shut us down another two weeks. When we did reopen, um, our general manager, uh, Alan Wilshire, he's just really amazing at coming up with ideas to keep us afloat and, you know, really just throttling us forward. Um, we had an idea, uh, and also um, we also use uh, modern media, which is Flash and Sydney, and uh, they're very connected in the community with the musicians and stuff. So we all came up with the ideas of doing the uh, concert series over at Shorefire. Um, we had to figure out how to bring locals to Waikiki. How do we become a destination so people come into Waikiki? Because we all know locals typically don't want to come to Waikiki. We don't want to come to Waikiki because, you know, if we're going to come to Waikiki and we drink, there's cops everywhere, you're going to get a DUI. So you don't want to come to Waikiki. 
in addition to that, it's packed everywhere. The, the parking fees are atrocious, you know, in Waikiki. So there was just not a lot of, I mean, you really had to be motivated to be able to come to Waikiki, whether it was for surfing or a staycation or something. So we had to be pretty creative. So we came up with a bunch of, all the musicians were out of work. So um, uh, we figured we could support our musicians and support ourselves too. And so basically what we did was we created these con weekend concert series where Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from six o'clock to eight o'clock PM on our open air lanai, um, we socially distanced all the tables six feet apart. Um, and I think we can only have 35 uh, ticket holders out, out there some, somewhere in that range. And uh, it's, it's been successful. So the artist gets to keep all of the, uh, whatever they're charging for um, their, their, their fee for that, that whole weekend. Uh, and the um, customers are uh, purchasing those tickets on Eventbrite and stuff like that, um, Ticketmaster. And just, we're selling out all the time. People are just dying to get out. People are like just waiting. And so like when we opened originally in uh, August, we had all our concerts sold out. The last one was supposed to be King of Spades and it ended up happening where they shut us down again. And so we contacted all the ticket holders and we said, I'm so sorry, we'll refund your money. They're like, no, don't refund my money. Please hold on to my money. Just keep my space because I want to go out after this thing's done. So we did. And uh, everybody was like that. Everybody's just dying to go out. So um, the, the concert series have been a blessing. It's not only helped us uh, and, and, our, and our numbers, uh, but it's also helped the musicians too. Now, because we are in Waikiki and we're on the lanai and we're not enclosed inside, other people can hear us. So the tourists are now coming upstairs because they hear all the music of what's going on. And so we're still at 50% capacity, which kind of sucks, but you know, um, eventually I know that will be lifted. And so we've created different things like um, some of the social distance barriers in between our booths and other things like that. Um, in addition to you pointed uh, to a barrier, what kind of a barrier is that? Uh, well, what we're what we're doing is we built these little plexiglass wood frames that we attach to the wall. Uh huh. So um, that's pretty much what we had to do to. to uh, no, make sure that's, a, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, all of our tables are distanced outside. Um, so that, that's helped because you can have a uh, live music in the open air. So a lot of people don't have that open air, so they don't have that option. Uh, gratefully, we're, we're, we, we have that option so that we're able to do um, that. But we're taking people's temperatures at the door. We're doing contract tracing, tracing getting their addresses, all the things that are required to, for us to do. Employees with gloves, um, you know, everybody, all the employees are getting temped when they come before they step even into the, onto the property. We're temping them because we can see them from the office that, that oh, someone's coming in. So they, they know to wait at the door. Um, so we're trying to be very, very careful, haven't had any cases. And everybody's just been really, really happy that we're open and that we're doing what we're doing. So I think there's been a lot more gratitude from the public rather than kind of like, oh, my God, they're you know, they're, they're, they're super spreader event or something like that, which, you know, of course, isn't true. So, so I think we've been getting a lot of good feedback and um, it, it, it's been extremely busy and every concert that we do moving forward has been selling out. But besides that, uh, we do have a limited menu. We haven't, we're not offering everything on our menu. So we cut back our menu a little bit. Um, our hours have changed at this uh, international marketplace location. We used to be open from 8 a.m. till 2 a.m. After 10 p.m., we would turn into a nightclub from 10 a.m. 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. So we'd have salsa nights, we'd have nightclub nights, New Year's parties. It was like just the, the, the heart of like deep kind of. And now we can only stay up until 10. So of course we shut down and we open on weekdays at 3 p.m. and stay open until only 10. So we're only open for those seven hours um, because there's no lunch business yet, not enough to keep us open. And there's not enough breakfast business when we used to be open at 8 a.m. So we're playing it careful, but on the weekends, we're doing a little something different. We are opening at 10 a.m. and then closing at 10 p.m. So we're noticing that, 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 that people are out to eat brunch. <laughs> you know, they want that we serve brunch from 10 to 10 to two. So, and then our happy hour starts at 3.30 because we open at three. So that whole schedule has been kind of working. Um, we've done things at like $3 Heineken's because locals have, love, love Heineken's, right? But tourists love Heineken's too. So we've lowered our prices. We also give a 15% off for Kama Aina's um, always. And if you're using the restaurant card, we're giving you happy hour on all the, the happy hour food uh, items um, all day and all night long. So um, you get that, that discount on, on that also. Um, but besides that, uh, I think, um, it's going pretty well. The, uh, 
tourists are, are, are coming in quick and, and they're here and um, they're just happy to be here. I think they're all just waiting to their, their plane tickets were just waiting for them to arrive. So um, yeah, I, I, we're, we're excited to have them back. And I think everybody's being careful. They respect that we're being really careful at the door. I know it's frustrating when you go to a restaurant and you have to pretty much wait in line to be tested and stand five feet apart and they, everybody's getting used to it now. So at the end of the day, everybody's leaving safe. And um, some of the other things that we're doing to attract people here are radio commercials um, through iHeart uh, Station, through um, Flash. Um, he's also over there too and has helped us out with that. So we've been making funny kind of local style commercials. Hey, Chimo, come on down, Waikiki, you know, that kind of fun stuff. So trying to get just a mix of everything. Hey, you could, you could be on those commercials, Alan, that's good. <laughs> Actually, actually, I, I wrote them and I, and I started recording them, but they have a couple of local guys at the office that sound more authentic than, I, than my pigeon does. But, but you know, I, I think, you know, <laughs> but you know, we're 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 just trying to do everything that we can, and we got a bunch of smart people on board that are just really full throttling us in every direction. And and Cheryl has just been amazing. You know, um, I, I, I Cheryl's been reaching out to us and um, giving us advice on whether it's just PPP loan things or this and that. So. The Hawaii Restaurant Association is, has been a huge asset to, to, to have on our side because who else would be a fighting for us? You know what I mean? Who else would be talking, giving us advice on stuff? We we don't know who else would be. You know? So we're grateful for Cheryl and, and her organization and what they've been doing for us too. Okay, Rebecca, you've been listening, right? Have you been have you been taking notes on this? I thought I saw you taking notes a minute ago. <laughs> What 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 is that is that Alan is doing is something you could um, emulate? Yeah, I love the ideas. I live music has been very trending um, and of interest with our local community. So if that was an opportunity for us at our locations, that would be something that we would love to have. Um, I love the happy hour for locals. They do love that happy hour. We um we offer our happy hour all day at our bar. Uh, but our bar is limited seating. So we've, we've had to encroach our dining space and outdoor um, patio area for those happy hour loving folks. Um, lots of good ideas. Yeah, I'm, rem I'm reminded of, uh, I, I date myself, the Hawaiian region, Mount Kalakaua, years ago. They had Kanakapila. Oh, Cheryl was there. Good Kanakapila. Right. Uh, I, I don't know what it is now. Cheryl, do you know what it is now? And it was uh, it was really popular. You put a few musicians in, you have them sing a little slack key, whatnot. And uh, people come from miles around. They, you can't tear them out of there. It's so good. Cheryl, have you got any reactions to this? Is, uh, you know, wh where is this going as far as you can see? Yes, absolutely. You know, the, all of the media has been welcoming back our tourists. As you know, the Visitors Bureau and DBED. The message for the Hawaii Restaurant Association is we are putting in all the safety guidelines, right? We're following the CDC, the FDA, the Department of Health. As you hear, right, Alan and Rebecca are practicing all the safe protocols. So the message to our tourists is it's a safe destination. You know, we're safer in our state, as you saw the numbers by this weekend, we are not a red state. You know, it's safe to come here. And I think they're gonna start wanting as the snow rolls in, as the cold rolls in through the, through the mainland to, to come to paradise and enjoy not only our beauty of our islands, but the wonderful food and all of the different cuisines that they can enjoy. Um, I've been to Yaya's and they have an outdoor seating Allen is all open air and that's safe. You know, a lot of the tourists, that's what they look for is they look for enjoying the, you know, Hawaii has a certain smell, right? So when you're in Hawaii, you know, you, you want to be in an open air and, and Yaya's has an open air seating right outside their restaurant. Allen has a lanai and he overlooks, literally, if you look down from his lanai, you see Kalakala Avenue like literally, and um, he has all, you know, glass, it's beautiful. So I think our, our tourists are gonna really enjoy coming back and coming back to our restaurants. Yeah, you know, the idea of having entertainment, yes. you know, and, and music, of course, is number one, but there are other things too, who knows what? You could show people how to, how to make sushi, who knows what? Um, you could give them a, what, what are you turning your camera again? <laughs> oh, I was going to show you the lanai. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, this so, is a dynamic program. 
<laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> whenever you have, whenever you have restaurant tours on, restaurant tours are very dynamic. They're very <laughs> restaurant tours are crazy. The band, the band will set up really over there, and it's all open air. We got a ocean view over there that you can kind of see, and then we have our nice little VIP area. So everybody's kind of distanced apart. And here's Kala Kala. So basically our music plays and everybody in the world or out here can hear it. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, you know, <laughs> your comments really make me think that uh, this is a time for developing brand loyalty, <clears throat> not only among tourists, but among locals, yeah. like those people who are perfectly happy to let you keep their money on the, on the failed concert. Um, uh, that's, that's a statement, you know, it's like the opera, the opera could not, you know, uh, actually perform uh, some of the, the operas that were scheduled for the Hawaii opera theater season. And they said, well, you know, you can ask for your money back. We'll give you money back or you, you can let us keep your money and, um, and it'll be a support thing. And, you know, like 99.999 people said, you know, percentage of people said, keep the money, we love you, we support you. In the time of COVID, you know, we have brand loyalty. And I think this is a time to uh, exploit that, if you don't mind me using that term, um, but also develop it you know, for the future, which takes me to the next question I wanna ask both of you guys. And so COVID, this is, should not be a big surprise, um, despite President Trump's uh, remarks about turning the corner, COVID is not over and it's probably not going to be over for a while and whatever you're doing now um you know is is is, is a solution maybe uh until now but you've got to keep on coming up with stuff you've got to have ideas in the pipeline um you got to you know maintain your relevance and your cachet um because covid is going to be corrosive the longer it goes on uh, so rebecca what have you got up your sleeve you know what i mean <laughs> we can't give all of our secrets away <laughs> uh, you know holidays right around the corner we have some great ideas to welcome our you know holiday parties back in and safely um some great to-go box items and um continuing the happy hour trends and the the rewarding locals for their patronage trends and um you'll just have to keep following us and wait to see you know when i first started practicing law was before any of you people were born um and my boss said to me jay in your legal career never uh, never forget one rule what's that uh you should never underestimate the power of parking and Re rebecca allen was talking about that you know and it seems to me that the city and county or the Waikiki Improvement Association or um, the Hawaii Lodging Tourism Association really wanted to do you guys a favor. What they would do is somehow support the parking um, because it is really an ugly experience to come to Waikiki for anything and have to go through the parking. I mean, Alan mentioned that. It, it is. Completely and right I, would like to, I would like to mention that the uh, international marketplace, uh, the management has been very, very flexible with us uh, through these challenging times. They're just uh, really awesome landlords. And that what they've done is they've given us a four hour validation uh, for anybody that comes for our concert series. So um, that's a nice big thing because basically you're gonna come into Waikiki with free parking, get a 15% off Kamaaina, have a great experience, have an ocean view, and then, you know, <laughs> so it's all positive. <laughs> and get nailed, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what about you, Rebecca? You have parking issues. Is there anything you can do to improve your, you know, your, your experience by improving the parking? Um, we are fairly fortunate to have parking available and validation um, accompanying your dine-in. Um, so as of now, parking hasn't been too much of an adversity for us, thankfully, just outside of Waikiki. So we don't have those issues over there. Okay, the other thing I wanted to ask about is something I mentioned before the show began, and that is, you know, uh, Rebecca, you mentioned that you, you have new ideas, new packaging for takeout, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think for local people, takeout is pretty important because, you know, I can't stand being my house anymore. I got to get out, even if it's just to go buy a takeout. 
I don't care about eating it. I just want to get out of the house and get it. You just want to feel it in your hands. <laughs> Smell it in the car, you know? Um, so the question is, uh, what, what can we do to make takeout really wonderful? Um, and, uh, you know, I, to me, it's part of the question I was asking earlier. Uh, what can we do going forward when COVID continues? So how do you see takeout evolving, Rebecca? You know, I think it's still going to be an important component of our restaurant and our business and continuing to be able to have the food look, smell, taste delicious, just as it would on a plate sitting at one of our tables. You know, the only thing that they would be missing would be the service component. I mean, you have to throw away your own rubbish if you have it at home, but luckily no dishes. Um, so just being thoughtful of how people are going to take your item home or wherever there may be um, to enjoy together. Um, a simple experience where you still are catered to, you know, let us take care of you with this dine out item. Um, but still. Yeah, I, I think there's all kinds of possibilities. I mean, for example, um, I get, I get uh, the, the limited number of people I can to come to my family picnic uh, Alan and I and I would like to have a wonderful meal. Um, so I called you up and I say, can you mm -hmm. deliver X units of this and that and the other thing to Alamoana Park where I'm gonna be sitting with my family. And uh, just, just call me when you're ready to meet me at the curb and I'll, I'll come and get it at the, you know, the, the roadway that goes through Alamoana, just for example. I mean, are you doing that? Are you doing this kind of catering thing uh, either directly or through Uber or Lyft or what have you? Um, well, what uh, we're, is this something in the future for you? Yeah, so what, we, what we've done is before we actually reopened again, we've already engaged our Bite Squad, our Grubhub, um, and I think, our, I think we're doing Uber Eats too, um, just to be able to co cover all the bases for the takeout side. Because if we, like, like, typically we don't deliver internally, um, just because we do, are not staffed for that. We haven't set that component part of our business up. But when people contact us for um, uh, different types of catering, so uh, we get a lot of military requests for catering because we have some friends over there and they're always wanting our food. So I'll drive it out there, you know, right after it's prepared and I'll, I'll, I'll deliver it personally if it's kind of a, a larger order. Um, but every other order uh, does go through the delivery components that are set up through Grubhub and Bite Squad and stuff ready. Okay, you're not reluctant to do that. And, and how, do you, are you uh, in agreement, Rebecca? This is what you would do too. You would get this done somehow using Uber Eats or one of the others uh, to my, my picnic in Alamoana. Right now, we're kind of in the boat um, with our Waikiki friends and you know we're working with a very small crew, but we wanna make it happen. So we, um, we've been doing our best to just be in all hands on deck to make those types of requests and accommodations. Um, we haven't, partnered yet with a formal delivery team, um, but it likely is in the very near future. Yeah, good. So before the show began, I was, uh, this is what I was getting to, last question really, um, is the idea of um, getting into the supply line for the, the big uh, food markets and, uh, you know, doing vacuum pack, you need a machine for that. Doing a, a flash frozen, you need a machine for that. Um, you got to have labels and then you could probably sell your packaged meals um, to Safeway or one of those. Um, any interest in that or is the investment too expensive? Alan? Uh, so my wife and I also used to own a company called Grilt and we were in like Ala Moana, Kahala Mall and Grilt also did meal prep. So we had a company called builtbygrilt.com, which focused 100% on meal prep. And the difference with our meal prep is you could customize each meal, whereas typically meal preps out there, you kind of got to buy a group of or a series of, of meals that might be the same as what everybody else gets. So I, I had a lot of experience in the meal prep. I actually built all my own meal prep business websites and the components to it and everything. Um, when we... Uh, closed the last grilled restaurant, that component went with it too. We were thinking of keeping it. And now through COVID, we were thinking of bringing it back, but it, 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 it's a whole nother ball game because we just have different stuff and it would just take a lot of time to engineer the website. So it would be seamless because what people were doing before is they'd go onto my website, 
they would basically uh, choose their protein, choose their starch, choose their veggie. How many options do they want? Um, when do they want to pick it up? What location they want to pick it up? They could choose any of our retail locations. So it, it was already in microwavable containers and, and stuff like that. But because we have totally different food at Shorefire, I never even thought of doing meal prep out of here because we've always been so busy with just tourist business typically. <laughs> so, so it is something that we have discussed. I don't know if we're ramped up to do that because now the tourists are coming back. So we, we, it might not be necessary to do it. Um, but it, it, you know, we're willing to do anything to stay open. We just don't want to close. You know, we, we, we had 97 people that we laid off and we brought about 50 of them back so far because we only opened this international marketplace location the other co-ab location is it's there's not enough tourists to open that location up yet alan uh, do you see um, a time when there will be consolidation of restaurants where some uh you know well-heeled investor from the mainland will come and say you know these guys uh, really are um, you know pretty pretty good they're resilient they know how to stay in business i'm going to buy them i'm going to buy half a dozen restaurants some of them are going to be on the same block. And uh, I'm going to be a, a restaurateur that's going to own all the restaurants that need to be sold. You see that happening? This is the thing is, you know, our business needs us. And to sell our business just to someone coming from the mainland, I'm not interested in that. Like, we didn't build this business and work this hard and put all of, like, I grew up here my whole life. So, there's a lot of infusion of Hawaii in here. You know what I mean? Like I'm not Hawaiian, but I basically have been well, here all can, my life. So you can do a pretty good pigeon. Yeah. I, uh, well, I'm not even going to go there, but, 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 but I think, you know, like understanding this market and the, the components that I go through on a daily basis from even just guys on the street marketing, passing out flyers, stuff like that. Some mainland owner, it won't, it won't work. You, you, it, 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 these, Businesses need my wife and I. It's like they, yeah. they, you know, it's just, it's, it's, you know. So it, it's, it's our passion. It's like what we love to do. What, what would we do? I don't know. I'd be bored every day. So I love doing. It. I come here every day at five a.m. and work on stuff and uh, love it. So it's my passion. So I don't know if I, I would never sell. So, so, so Rebecca, where do you, where do you stand on all those things? Yeah, no, I, I echo what Alan says, and yeah, our, our company is locally owned, um, homegrown, so we, um, we're we in the same boat. I hear you. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right, Cheryl, it's time for you to summarize. What have we learned today? What pro profound truths have broken through to you, Cheryl? Uh, tell us about the overarching wisdom here. As, as I've mentioned before, Jay, our restaurants are ready. We are looking forward to welcoming all of our tourists back. And as you can hear by just these two restaurant tours, they're already implementing all the different things so that if the rest, if the tourists don't want to leave their hotel room for a meal, they can take out. And that is the resounding, you know, some people still don't want to go into a restaurant, but they enjoy eating the Hawaiian food and all of the blends. So they both have outdoor dining. It's also very safe to eat in an outdoor fresh air dining. Um, the Hawaii Restaurant Association, as Alan said, is a resource and we are the voice of Hawaii's food service and restaurant industry. And as always, Jay, we look forward to dining together again. <laughs> Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Rebecca. It was great to talk to you Jesus. guys. <laughs> yeah. Carry on. Stay 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 safe. Take care.